Welcome back, gang. It's Deltia from DeltiasGaming.com. And back with the healer build, the battery for PvE. Doing a little trials, little dungeons, a little Dragon Star Arena. And so what we did is change it up and made it a little bit more offensive. I'm going to give you a list of gear, skills, alternatives, and things you can run based on the context. If you like four mans, you like doing trials, you like doing whatever there has to offer in PvE, this build is tuned for straight whooping up on damage so let me explain what we change and how it can impact your group in terms of damage and optimizing your dps so my friend alan and i did a little experiment and what we did is we had him in a stamina dragonite which he parses regularly about 33 to 35 thousand single target damage on the robust mob and so what we did is basically did a parse where all i did was give him spears and what he wanted to see what his dps was and then we did a parse with this build fully optimized all the buffs and debuffs that i can run so i'm going to get to that in a little bit but you got to see the damage difference okay here's what it looks like unbuffed 33,000 damage single target by himself not bad on a stamina dragonite let's look at what it looks like fully buffed so when i say fully buffed essentially what i'm doing is applying minor of Ohm, shock aggressive warhorn combat prayer uh, and ritual of retribution so i'm going to do a little bit of damage but it's not going to be a super large amount so it is going to have changed the results somewhat but when you look at the damage he went from 33k to 44k is this a perfect statistical uh, evidence no but it really shows the power of your your build of what healers can do in this game and that is crank out the dps for your group so let me show you how it's done in this patch clockwork city Okay, so on to the battery skills and what has changed, what I flex in and out depending on the situation. So my bars are basically determined on how or what content I'm playing. Dragonstar Arena, Trials, Dungeons, Screwing Around, they're all different, right? So you have to swap them in or out. But we're going to start with the basics and that's the Restoration Staff. On my Restoration Staff bar I have Inner Light mainly for the spell Critical. And then also for the max magic and a little bit of recovery. So I would be able to heal more effectively on this bar. Now the very first skill from the restoration staff, you have one of two abilities that I primarily use. Rapid regeneration, I like this specific skill for dungeons and dragon star arena. The heal over time will proc spell power cure uh, very effectively, but in trials, you're gonna need some AOE healing, like healing springs. So it just depends on the content that you're doing. Both act as a heal over time per se, which is really relevant for our spell power cure uptime which is going to kill things faster so both things are really really advantageous for you to do rap regeneration in a uh, dungeon i just cast it twice or dragon star arena before the round starts uh healing springs i'm going to cast it when i have free time and i need that really powerful aoe healing so it just depends on your positioning third ability up pretty much i use this at all times the only time i wouldn't use combat prayer is let's say i have two stamina dps night blades they're going to keep up their buffs 100 percent of the times and even then it's questionable if you wouldn't use this ability the real reason you're using this ability is for minor berserk eight percent damage done and then also you do get a little bit of resistances as well it's incredibly powerful ability all this stuff is geared towards killing stuff so in elder scrolls online it's so odd to think that healers just really amplify the damage of everybody else so when you're doing your dps parses and you're going on target i mean that's one thing but when you're in a trial you're really dependent on your tanks and your healers to provide these buffs and when i say uptime how much percentage of the time are you keeping up combat prayer since it only lasts eight seconds it's really hard to manage everything at a hundred percent rate so prioritizing this ability is really really useful for your group but there's going to be sometimes you're going to need to drop a healing spring instead of uh, having this up a hundred percent of the time that just comes with time and being a good healer i'm not perfect at it but focus on this for massive massive damage though some classes have this inherently Another thing to know about it is it's a conal. So if you watch me heal on stream or in typical videos, I'm usually in the back and I'm casting my little DPS dust on my uh, uh, allies. So sometimes allies don't know to stand. The one will stand here and one will stand here and one will stand here. And they may not know that you're trying to hit them with combat prayer. And that just comes with time and experience. And you can always just tell someone, hey, can you stand by each other somewhat, uh, depending on the mechanics of the fight. That way you can get everybody. Because 8% on a bunch of players, stuff is going to melt. 
The fourth ability up is my Luminous Spear, and that is from the Adric Spear skill line. And it's really a resource tool, so giving resources to your allies. The thing is it's a synergy, so they can access it, and then you're going to have to cast it again if another ally is going to access it. So it's a good idea, 8 second duration, to try to keep your spear up alongside of Combat Prayer, though it's not perfect. It's not exactly the easiest thing to do. An alternative, or uh, something you probably want to use in Trials on a different bar, is Energy Orb. So Energy Orb is the other morph of Necrotic Orb and Undaunted skill line. It does a heal, and it restores resources as well. The difference is Luminous gives a little bit more resources, so that's why I like it. But the difference is Energy Orb, you can throw 5, 6, 12 of them if you want, and then players can activate the synergies, where Luminous, you throw one, a player activates the synergy, well, guess what? It's taken up for everybody else. So the thing is, if you're doing a four-man dungeon, Luminous is a really, really good go-to. But if you're doing a trial, you're going to think about slotting energy orbs in a different slot on your instruction staff bar. But both tools are, how, uh, are really, really good to use. And then we have our burst heal, Breath of Life. Even if I'm healing a trial, there's going to be times where I'm going to need a, a big burst heal on the tank or someone steps into a mechanic they don't know what's going on, or, you know, Dragonstar Arena, the boss just uppercuts somebody, and they're going to get really, really close to death. And so I think it's relevant to have a burst heal on the bar, um, so I just use that. Repentance I no longer use on these builds, just because it only gives me stamina back, so it's one of those PvP type things that I like, but PvE context, you're really going to rely on Luminous or Energy Orbs from Undaunted to restore resources, and a couple other things. For a here is Solar Prison. It has a really nice, big, nasty, juicy grab crush, okay? And it applies Major Maim, so reducing the damage. So you can apply Major Maim and you can apply Major Protection if someone's running the Resto Alt and you have this. And it does a lot of AoE damage. You hit the synergy and it flattens all the enemies in the play. So it's a really defensive based ultimate. Though I'm not going to use this primarily, though I do have it available if I need it. Like I said, if you need more healing or you're going up against something really, really juicy, try the Restoration Staff Ultimate and morph it into Light's Champion. And that's just the basic setup. On the Destruction Staff Bar, look how cool that looks. So the Charge Trait. Uh, got a couple basic skills here. So Destruction Staff, the reason we're using it is for a couple of reasons. Two skills specifically, Elemental Blockade, and we're going to use with a Lightning Staff. Blockade of Storm sets concussed enemies off balance. Concuss is a status effect that allows you to do more damage. Off balance, more damage with heavy attacks. There's also some champion point benefits to it as well. So that doesn't seem very, very useful, but in reality, if you do this with a uh, shock enchant to proc the concuss, you're setting them off balance, you're implying your invaluable aether, the damage difference that you will do on one target is substantial. And you actually do a lot of damage just having this down with um, Ritual of Retribution. So it's a really good damage tool that you don't have to spam cast. And guess what? It's on an eight second uh, duration. So a lot of times you're bar swapping in between blockade, combat prayer, throwing a spear down, so on and so forth. But this is one I pretty much always keep up in a massive AOE as best I can. Now, some other healer might be running this and that can free up a spot for you, but almost all the time I'm gonna keep this sucker up. Next ability up is Elemental Drain that we're gonna run. Now you have a couple different options in terms of how you want to run this. The other morph of Repentance here on my class skill, Restoring Light, the other morph of this will give the same buff as Elemental Drain. The thing about Elemental Drain is it lasts for a long time, has great range, single target, but it doesn't cost anything. So as long as I'm maintaining that on our primary damage tool, or as many as I can, because you can apply it, you're going to give minor magic steal to the enemy for anyone that's hitting it. So super, super great sustain tool for magic builds. One of the reasons a lot of people play magic builds. So these two buffs here, and this is 24 seconds, so it's going to last quite a while. These two reasons are the reasons we use it. Concussed, off balance, blockade, elemental drain though you can get it from a different source i have a flex spot here depending on the content that i'm playing so i put puncturing sweeps on the bar if i'm just tooling around doing dungeons dragon star arena uh, or that sort of thing so i'll put it right here now you don't have to have this skill so in trials what i'd recommend doing is putting energy orbs 
in the slot. So that's what's going to be really, really handy when you can't heap up luminous shards in a big trial as much, and you're going to really need to rely on casting this and having yeah, like multiple allies activate the synergy. So energy orbs there. Another thing you can do is Radiant Oppression is really, really useful for uh, Dragonstar Arena. So when I'm playing Dragonstar Arena, if I have st uh, magic builds, I'm going to keep Elemental Drain on, and I'm going to take off Puncturing Sleeps. If I have uh, stam builds, I'm not going to really need Elemental Drain because I can keep myself uh, pretty well topped off with magic, and I'm going to put Radiant Oppression there. So that's a flexible spot you can do, uh, just depending on the context of what you're playing. Then we have our two standard buffs that I go with, Channel Focus, Amazing Sustain, and then the Resistances. It doesn't cost a whole lot, but it's just freaky powerful sustain. You got to have a lot of magic as a healer. Ma magic sustain, reduce cost, and this is kind of our way to sustain really indefinitely with just a couple enchants, a couple things that we use. So I love this ability though. You could take it off if you're doing dungeons, but I almost always have it on because the resistance is keeping me alive uh, and also everything else with the passes. Ritual Retribution, I changed Morph. Extended Ritual, really, really good for PvE and PvP. Both, both are really, really good. The thing that I like about Ritual Retribution is it does a freaky amount of damage. Freaky amount of damage, okay? So the allies are going to have to activate the synergy to remove harmful effects. But when you put Ritual Retribution down and blockade a storm and just hold a heavy attack with a lightning staff, I mean, you can do 20,000 damage per second as a healer just holding a button down. So uh, it's really, really fun to do dungeons in Dragonstar Arena while optimizing your group and actually for just simply doing tons of damage with just a few skills. So Extended Ritual, it's easier to maintain because it doesn't have the duration of 12 seconds, but I like a little more offense now, so that's what I go with. Also another skill you're probably going to uh, need to level and maintain is Efficient Purge. There's going to be times where this is going to be super, super helpful because allies have already used the synergy to remove negative effects, and PvE encounters and trials specifically are going to have some encounters where you just have to get negative debuffs off or they're going to die. So you can slot this in uh, right here instead of it, but make sure that you get that PvP skill line leveled up. And this thing sucks to level, so get it done because you will be asked to bring this in if you're a Trials-focused player. That's the skills, and let's talk about the gear next. Um, it hasn't changed crazy different, but I want to talk about some options of things that you can run. setup that I came out with that I like to run is um, a 5-5-1 setup. So there's so many different options of things that you can run now and that's kind of makes the game fun but I took it on a more offensive level um, and just optimizing my damage for my players instead of like resource sustain and remember if you're in a trials group one healer can run a certain set another one can run another set so you can kind of double dip in effectiveness so what both healers are probably going to run in a trial situation is spell power cure so when you heal a friendly target 100% health you have a 50% chance of giving weapon and spell damage for 10 seconds this is really, really powerful, obviously, but the way to make use of this and scale your uptime as much as you can is heal over time effects, okay? So believe it or not, Ritual Retribution has a heal over time effect with it, but it's going to be your rapid generation or your healing springs, however you slot it here, is really going to boost the uptime. So that's what's going to make it really advantageous for you to continually cast this and maintain those buffs, whichever one you use, because you want to take advantage of as much uptime as you can. A tool like Combat Metrics can uh, evaluate how your performance is in that regard. Consoles, I don't think you have a way to do that yet, but if you are on PC, Combat Metrics is a good way to constantly look and seek your uh, improvement in your uptime because that's what makes a good healer. So we're going to have five pieces of this on at all times. And you'll look at the traits, divines. You can use divines or a combination of divines or infused, whichever you see fit. You know, infused on the large pieces with maybe uh, prismatic if you don't have a whole lot of health it will allow you to use a different type of food. I'm going to show you in the consumables. A lot of different combinations, but when in doubt, you can stick with the vines and use the Atronach Mundus Stone uh, just for a lot of sustain. The next uh, piece we're going to use is a Namaha set. We're going to have one heavy, six light. That's going to give us a large stat pool, and that's going to be really, really useful just because we want that max magic. Um, you can also slot tons of different stuff in here. 
Troll King gives percentage based uh, heals. You can have a Choke Thorn, which gives you magic recovery. You can have max stat pool like this, which is what I recommend and what I like. And I also went with the Infused Enchant, so you can see my health is really high. So I can actually go to do, do over here and use either Clockwork Citrus or this, okay? And if someone's running Ebony, I can get to almost that 18,000, 19,000 health with the other Clockwork Citrus food. And I got ridiculous recovery without a potion up. So that's kind of why I use this Damaha set. It's just really efficient, really effective. Okay, and then, so you'll notice that we have a five, then we have one, and then we have one. So Invaluable Aether, I don't see a lot of people running this, but it's just crazy good. Your fully charged heavy attacks do an additional amount of damage, great. But really, it's minor vulnerability. There's a few ways to get minor vulnerability. You can use this set, you can use poisons, um, so on and so forth. But when you provide this for your group with a lightning staff, wow. Wowzers as the damage go up. So we have a destruction staff, which is invaluable aether. This is not easy to get. I totally understand that. And it took me a long time to get it. But the difference is crazy good. And so I would say spend the time farming if you can. And you're like, charged? Charged trait? Why the hell does he have a charged trait? Charge straight shock enchant is going to proc that concussed status effect. That's going to increase your damage. Wall of elements, you're going to set the enemies off balance. So simply just holding down a fully charged heavy attack is going to do a multitude of things. You're going to give minor loan. You're going to have a chance to proc them charge status effects. You're going to set the enemy off balance with your blockade. So just literally doing that one fully charged heavy attack is going to add a freaky amount of DPS to your group. Trust me, do it. But it's not going to stack with, let's say, another healer running the set. So it's not always the best thing to run, but it's a good option if you're just doing four mans and you know, hey, this is, I, this is what I do. I'm going to run super damage producing sets. And Valuable Aether is still really strong. And then your healing staff can just depend. So Maelstrom is going to give you rapid regeneration. It's going to restore some, some magic. That's nice. The Asylum staff, if you don't haven't seen that yet, is pretty useful as well. And what happens with the Asylum staff, if we got it here, is when you cast... Let's see, Asylum. When you cast here with the Asylum staff, Blessings of Protection or Combat Prayer, the, the next cost of your magic and stamina healing abilities is reduced by 27% for three seconds. So it makes it really effective to like hit a combat prayer and then basically do a couple heal springs. It's like almost free magic really. So that's a useful alternative. Also the master's restoration staff, when you're using grand healing or healing springs, you restore stamina to targets. Also effective, but you know, not a lot of stam DPS are out there in trials anymore. So it might not be the best, but you have a bunch of different options here if you have access to these. And if not, you can always run a different setup than this and it'd be great. Now, alternatives of gear that you can run, there's a countless amount really. So in a trials group, if someone's running Infallible Aether, I would say uh, farm the worm setup because it's, most people are playing magic builds. Your tank's using magic. You're using magic. Your other healer is using magic. So you're going to want to have one person run this one. There's also a mending set that will reduce the damage of a target. You can run that as well. Uh, like there's just so many options that you can run. But I would still say stick with the basics. Spell Power Cure, Worm, really strong setup. But if you have access to that Infallible Aether or Mending or maybe even Sanctuary for your tankiness of your group, great. But if stuff dies fast, this game is easy. If stuff dies slowly, that's when mechanics will kick you in the butt. So that's what I would go with. As far as race food, Munda Stone, like I said before, um, the Witch Mother's Brew is really, really nice. You can go with the Clockwork Citrus, which will actually do a little bit more. If we go here, Clockwork Citrus Filet, obviously the new DLC. So increase max health by a little bit more, magic recovery and health recovery. So that'll get you to that about 17K. Someone's running um, Ebony in your group, boom, you're at 18K, it should be enough health. If not, use the infused traits on your body and then put a prismatic enchant on it. That'll help you out a bit. Or even use a one piece that gives you max health. But you wanna be probably about 18K health in your raid group if uh, someone's running the buff. Atronach Mundestone, you can play around and see what works best for you. If you run out of magic, your team's probably gonna die. So you wanna start there. If you can sustain really well, whether you're doing fully charged heavy attacks, you got your channel focused down, you're ripping off certain things, great. If not, use the Atrix Munda Stone. The ritual for pure healing is okay, but you don't really need to hit 30K Breath of Life. So that's really not gonna help anybody. So I would say kind of 
play around with it. If you like the hybrid damage dealer slash healer, maybe even go with the mage since it's going to affect healing and damage as well, but experiment with it. If you don't know what to do, select the Atronach. It's really, really good. Uh, Vampire. Vampire is still really effective in almost every PvE application uh, simply because of undeath and you also get more resource sustained. So you can you can just really bypass all the damage just by out healing it or using harness magic from the light armor skill line so i can see still using this setup it's just incredible i'm gonna go all uh magic here it doesn't make sense to use any health unless you're playing a race that doesn't have any health or you need to get to that 18k threshold you know in dungeons if you're screwing around about 17k is fine but you really want to get about 17 18k for trials at least about 1500 magic recovery and you can change your enchants on your jewelry to uh, sustain better so you could go one spell damage one recovery and then one reduce cost that will really help you out uh, sustaining as well as far as consumables go uh, i would keep spell power potions on you at all times if you can so major sorcery since we don't have access to that on our bar major prophecy will also be somewhat useful on our front bar destruction staff bar but really it's that major sorcery it's going to increase your healing through spell damage not a tremendous amount but it will work pretty pretty well so as far as food goes we talked about clockwork citrus witch mothers if you're really struggling with resources you could use this ores gamar whatever it's called red froth but I would stick with changing your build a little bit to sustain a little bit better and you should be fine because you really want to be applying fully charged heavy attacks which give you tons and tons of resources back anyways you really want to keep that up every 10 seconds I'm telling you the damage with combat prayer this shock off balance your team is going to skyrocket they're going to be nuking stuff and they're going to be asking you to heal all the time but quickly tucking on touching on champion points here if you want the no-brainer setup you just basically put 100 points into arcanus 100 points in tenacity is that super efficient no but it's just the no-brainer easy setup and then you come over here maybe summon a tumbling summon to block cost or uh, break free however you see fit now, I don't go crazy amounts into healing and or uh, crit. And the reason why is I play this more offensive. So I have blockade down, I have ritual of ret, I do use beam, sweep, some of these other things. And you know, right now it doesn't really make sense for me to hit like 30k breath of lives. So if you want a no-brainer setup, put 100 points into Blessed, 100 points into Elf Blunder, and then something else. But really, this setup is optimized for doing damage, sustaining, and uh, helping the group out. So I'm at 115. You could put five more points in here to get Arcane Well, but I'm not killing a whole lot of enemies, though I just do damage over time. So 31, 37, 10, coming over here. Master Arm, a lot of direct damage uh, uh, pumping up this thing. Coming over here, Thaumaturge, tons and tons of points into damage over time. Blockade hits really, really hard. So I passively do a lot of damage with Blockade and Ritual down, ripping off a fully charged heavy attack. And you can even optimize that further by putting some into Staff Esper. Play around with it. And coming over here, 61 into Ironclad, 61 into Thick Skin, 49, 49, and then we want to get that 10 point passive here. In that field of position so 10 into expert defender three in a quick recovery all right so how to play this build real quick uh, i have some past live streams so i'll probably link in the description but essentially you want to prioritize what's going on so priorities 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 priority number one is for people to be alive okay that's priority number one so you have to heal and be able to do that you're going to have your heal over time going in my opinion it's what you want to focus on well there's healing springs rapid regeneration it's going to keep your spell power cure up time high it's going to passively heal so you don't have to actively sit there in breath of life or combat prayer next thing up is you're going to want a combat prayer it gives them resistances minor berserk flat out tons of damage so i kind of eight seconds here so every two combat prayer roughly i'm going to do my rapid regeneration or heal springs and then on my other bar here depending on what's going on i really prioritize blockade of storms with a fully charged destruction staff attack okay and that's eight seconds the minor vulnerability is 10 seconds and then elemental drain or if i have beam on you know i'm going to use that when the targets get low ritual of ret is at 12 seconds this is at 18 but when you move out of the the ritual you get a little bit more um, time on it so when in doubt blockade combat prayer fully charge attack with some heals over time 
you're not going to be able to do everything 100% of the time because sometimes people are going to step into poop and you're going to have to breath life them. Sometimes you're going to need more resources and you're going to be throwing spears or energy orbs. Sometimes you're just going to finish off a target with the bean. But this is how it looks like when I play it. So I'm going to put my ritual down. I'm going to get this fully charged. You can see that little purple icon there. So I'm going to combat prayer. And as I bar swap back, I'm going to throw a spear. Okay. Ritual is about down. I'm going to chest that. My blockade. Fully charge. Bar swap. Combat prayer is just going down. Luminous. I got six seconds left on my rapids. And then if you don't know what to do, all you need to do is simply just fully charge lightning staff. You don't know what to do. Just go, okay. Take a second. Fully charge lightning staff. Throw my luminous down. Two clicks on this. Go back. And almost always... You're going to be going back and forth between fully charged heavy attacks, blockade, and combat prayer. That's kind of what you're doing because they're on an eight-second timer, okay? So once you get the hang of it, you're just going to be kind of going back and forth on those things. And action duration reminder is the add-on that I have that shows that. But your the animations and what it looks like should be pretty simple as you're doing a big trial. Uh, that purple thing around them. You know, lightning on the ground, and then combat prayer is a little bit trickier to uh, to do. But eight seconds, so you're going to be bar swapping a lot, going back and forth between those buffs, and that's kind of how you play it. So hopefully, this build doesn't change very much when this new patch comes out <laughs> that has two new dungeons. I don't know what sets are going to be in there, but I, I'm pretty safe to say this will be an effective way to play the healer uh, for a while. So. I'm getting back into PvE somewhat. Um, it's more fun now that I have access to doing trials easier, and I'm getting some of the gear that I've been missing forever, ever, ever. So it's a lot more fun. And when you play a healer, it's different than other games. Like this game is, is more about optimizing your group while healing. In other games, it's like healing while optimizing your group. So think of it as a different way to play a healer. And if you want to sit there and spam healing springs over and over and over, that's fine. But if you want like super fast clears and, and just crazy damage, crazy easy, you have to optimize DPS. That's the difference between the good teams and the bad ones is yes, they have really good players, but all their gear sets, all their enchants on their weapons, how much spell penetration they're running is all timed and finely tuned to optimize DPS. And this is what the battery does really, really well in Clockwork City. Thanks for watching.